Welcome back. Paul Phillips coming up. TJ Cloutier coming back. Also, resolution to one of our contests. But first, something you've come to love. Pirate Parkinson's Off the Wall. People have been aghast at your decision to vote Howard Lederer as the first guy off the wall of fame. Poker players have been devastated. We've been getting emails from all over the world. You know, despite what's happened, it's nice to see the poker people are finally turning around and trying to do the decent thing here and having their opinions heard. Well, it's back to business. We've got to get somebody off the wall. And at least you're doing the decent thing now. A lot of the players that we thought would get a lot of votes are up there at the top of the poll. It's very close between a few of them, and we've had a, a new runner. A European has been getting quite a few votes in the last couple of days, most of them which seems to be coming from a blocked vote of the American dealers in particular. It's going to be very close, every vote is going to count, so please keep your votes coming in, send them to the email address. Park. Paul Phillips has made flip-flops and pink hair famous, but what He's do you made know? a lot of colours here. <laughs> what do you know about his game? About his game? I, I don't know a huge amount about his game, except he's been very successful. But I, I do know a little bit about Paul Phillips, the man. I mean, they put him through the test in 2001. In the, in the big event in 2001, we were down to about 100 players. And then uh, sometimes you get really weird draws in the big tournament. And just a whole load of real good players and me all got put at the one table. The table of death. The table of death. <laughs> it was. Uh, I was in seat two. Uh, Helmet was in seat three. Uh, Paul was in seat four. Then there was Daniel, Carl McKelvey, Bill O'Connell, Bill O'Connor, and um, Tony D. In the ninth seat. Oh, it, it, it was. It was awesome. It was great fun. <laughs> but in the middle of all of this, Paul got dealt the aces twice in three hands and lost two absolutely huge pots. Now, Paul's a great competitor, I mean, and he, but he took this. I mean, when that happens in the World Series, it's about the worst thing. It's just sick. But he just took it so, so well. And then Phil grabbed the microphone from Thompson, Bob Thompson, and he goes running around saying what a, what a great guy Paul Phillips was and that he'd love to think that if he'd had this happen to him, that uh, he'd have taken it as well. But when Phil sat down, I said to Phil, well, it would never happen with you, Phil, because you'd still have been complaining about the first beat when the second one came around. <laughs> Uh, his great guest. We're excited to have him here. He's won a WT bracelet, three World Series of Poker final tables last year alone. Please welcome the one and only Paul Phillips. Paul, you've got one of the most popular blogs on the internet, but uh, a lot of crazies on there. You're getting very close to them. Do you feel like sometimes you're getting too close to these anoraks? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's there's a there's a natural layer in between uh, me and them. It's called me never leaving my house. So <laughs> unless unless they're going to breach security at the building, I think I'm all right. But you get very involved in the internet chat. I mean, you're you're, you're basically one of the main voices on the forums. Yeah, it kind of snuck up on me. It's funny uh, when I started writing in my blog almost exclusively instead of spreading it out over all manner forums. I discovered there were a lot of people reading it. Which is kind of fun. A lot of sick people around. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sick people with nothing to do, I guess. Very bored. Uh, but uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's great to have a reasonably high quality place uh, of, for discussion and where I can just delete stuff that's super lame. <laughs> An ability that uh, uh, I don't have uh, anywhere else. I mean, it is, it is mostly poker. You started something Jopkey. What is it? <laughs> Jopkey, is, Jopkey is the greatest meme uh, I've seen in a while. Uh, I was playing triple draw on ultimate bet, which I never do, but uh, brought somebody else's account and Helmuth uh, showed up and just started raving every time he lost a pot. I mean, the guy will go pat after one draw with like a 98 and then be just just flabbergasted that somebody who draws three times might make a, a an eight or a seven. Uh, and <laughs> he was so mad, he was fat fingering the keyboard, you know, just rage induced typos and trying to say joke, but he kept saying job key. 
And so I posted screenshots uh, of the transcript and... Uh, of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, well, what, what, else would really... what else would you do? <laughs> and it really went wild from there. I had nothing to do with it. But people were making hats, shirts, banners, um, you know, using it in conversation. You, some guy saw a random person in the mall wearing a jockey hat. You can see him around the World <laughs> Series now. Uh, it's uh, becoming a bit of like a, a shibboleth among, you know, Helmuth uh, teasers uh, to say job key because then you know it's you know what's up <laughs> a proud accomplishment <laughs> I think the base with anything <laughs> all right <laughs> let's talk world series wpt i mean which to get more excited about right now you've got the title and the second one the wpt Right. Well, you know, I guess it's self-fulfilling that uh, my success on the WPT and relative lack of success of the World Series would make me say that the WPT is what I'm excited about. <laughs> uh, that's not really true. I mean, it's uh, the it's it's really about the money. I mean, the the fans want it to be about you know all manner of things that it's not really about. Uh, you know, poker success is measured by money, so I don't care where I win it. Uh, if uh, if I can win a million dollars at the World Series, that's great. If I can win a million at the WPT, that's great too. I can get my money back in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's also great. <laughs> what kind of player do you consider yourself? I mean, a lot of the stuff, you know, I see your writings. I mean, it seems like you're a very mathematical guy. Is, is, that, is that how you, how do you slot yourself? Well, uh, it's true. I am a very mathematical guy. People often misunderstand what that means. Um, people have this very narrow view of what it means to be a mathematic player. Um, they, they often, they, they, what they want to think is that that means predictable. Uh, but it's actually quite the opposite. It's an understanding how and where you randomize um, so that you can't be exploited or predicted. Now, I'm not nearly as good at that as I'd like, and I also try to keep just a streak of just complete senselessness in there because a little bit of that goes a long way and people don't want to play pots with you. That's what I try for. The hair, Paul. <laughs> I mean, you've had more hair colors than, than, than anybody in poker. Uh, What's next for it? <laughs> well, I think I'm, I'm really happy with this. Uh, it's, you know, for me, it's it all about the, the, the lowest maintenance <laughs> approach. Uh, that's, you know, the beard was not some well thought out uh, uh, endeavor to look crazy. It was just got it tired worked, of shaving. <laughs> right, right, that was accidentally. Uh, so this is by far the easiest and most comfortable. So I think we have a winner here. <laughs> all right. We're going to talk a little more about the World Series later, but I uh, want to know if you'd play a little game with us. We have something called Beat the Bookie. And uh, I'll tell you what, take a look, take a look at this. Well, you can see, we're seeing a shot. That is the World Series of Poker Press Room hotbed of activity park. Yeah, it's about the same size as the poker room in Binion's used to be. <laughs> <laughs> you can see a shot of the free drinks. That's what a lot of the meeting members come in for. And uh, we, ha we have a little question. Here's a guy standing around. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He looks like a media guy, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> doing nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, what, yeah. What, 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 what we reckoned is there are three things that a person can do coming into the media room with the media pass. They can either just go for the free drink. Always popular with the media. They could go and come in to actually use the press facilities. Oh, no. That'll never happen. Or they could do both. So we've got a little proposition bet here. And uh, we want to know, what will the next person through the door do? Now, of course, you're going to be playing with viewers' money. <laughs> We've had two losers so far here on the Beat the Bookie game, and a starting stake of 500 is down to 300. One of our lucky viewers is going to win all the money left in the cigar box at the end of the show's run. Uh, so we'd like you, if you're willing, to bet some of the viewers' money, however much you want, on one of these propositions. Next guy through the door, what is he there for? Is he there this, for... This, this isn't the setup. This was no, completely this, this random. Happened. This happened. This is completely random. Uh, are those odds? Uh, those, those are odds. Are yeah. those determined by having washed the door and gaining a sense of what people do, or is that somebody's I mean, I mean, wild swing? No, no. Our bookmaker <laughs> sat down there for a while and, and, and really reckoned what are the real chances of, of, of what are the guys come into the media room for? I mean, um, is it the free drink? Is it to actually use the press facilities? Or, of course, they can and, do both. And I get to decide how much to bet? You, you can bet anything up, anything of the viewer's money you want. Uh, any of it. If I, what if I bust them? <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, you won't be coming back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you remember what you said about not leaving your house? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, I'm supposed to use the uh, Kelly criterion for maximal bankroll growth, but I don't really know what the size of my edge year is, if any. Uh, can I wager a third of their money? And, uh, you know, I like the price on uh, used press facilities. 
So uh, you, you want to bet three to one. But yeah, if I'm getting paid three to one on that or they, uh, I, I think that's a pretty good gamble. Have you spent, spent much time with the World Series <laughs> of Poker Press Corps? Well, I only, I only need one guy out of four to want to, you know, to have to keep his job by sending in one little line. They're still here. All right. <laughs> Paul's These guys betting, haven't paid enough to worry about that. Paul's betting $100, three to one, that the next person to the door is there to use the press facilities only. Let's see what happened. All right, this guy is leaving. I have to wait. Uh oh, it's Andy Block. Oh no, it's Andy Block. <laughs> <laughs> Settle. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Disaster. Yeah. Yeah. You knew but, right when you saw. Well, him. the free anything. You you should. Andy is a real genius at taking advantage of comps. So uh, I'd be surprised if he doesn't leave here with his pockets just loaded with waters. Are you calling things. him cheap? You name it. Boy, you know, is there a better word than cheap? How about like, super cheap? Well, <laughs> you heard him. He said he was just there for the Coke. Sorry, Paul. Sorry for the viewers. That's three in a row. No one's won the Beat the Bookie. They're down to $200. But sports betting's a tough game, guys. <coughs> now, Paul <laughs> and TJ, <laughs> you guys have both played the World Series a lot. I mean, a bit of a scene change to the Rio this year. Are you happy about the new room? Oh, it's a great room and everything, it's but uh, the walk is out of this world. I mean, even if you park in the back parking lot, you still got a mile to walk once you park your car. That's... Uh, it's easy to uh, dream of uh, smaller everything. <laughs> yes. Do you think that it's it's hard to find out who the best all-around poker player is, or, or what's the test? Who? What I want to know is who cares. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Where, like, but the real, guys. the pros, the pros are yeah. Phil yeah. cares, yeah. but the pros are in it for the money. Right. Uh, and uh, like I've I've did a deal. Uh, well, this is a good story, so I might as well tell it. I was I played Tommy Vu at the Blasio in Pot Limit Holden. We got down head up, and there was 540,000 uh, was the prize between, I mean, the amount of chips. Tommy Vu had 320,000, I had 220,000. He says, well, no use discussing a deal with you, is there, TJ, because you don't make them. I says, wait a minute, that's wrong. I says, I make a deal, but I always get the best of it if I make it, and I tell you up front. <laughs> you know, that's he says, fair. well, what, what kind of deal can we do? And I says, we could chop it right down the middle, just like that, which would be a hell of a deal for me. So uh, he says, you mean I get the $25,000 seat, you know, for the main event at the Blasio, uh, and then we chop the cash? I says, no, I told you I was going to get the best of it. We go right down the middle. He says, okay. <laughs> he said, okay, really? He, he said, okay. So we chopped it. So that's uh, <laughs> So you're in, you're right. in, when you're playing, you're in it for the money. You have to, I mean, the WPT title that... Uh, <laughs> I guess it was with, with Mel Judy. He took a lot of flack because uh, the WPT doesn't allow deals. I mean, is it the player's money or is it the WPT's money? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's the player's money. I, sure. I, I don't concede uh, the, they ever had a right to ban deals. And, I, you know, they haven't. Uh, unfortunately, what they've done is drive them underground. Um, when Mel and I made a deal, they hadn't yet uh, banned them. That was something that came as a result of that, in fact, because it was reported in Sports Illustrated. didn't feel like I needed to hide it because there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, now I don't like. But if the you hide it, it looks like there's something wrong. Right. No, well, by the way, I was number three it. in that deal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was the third one in you that. You were in that. Deal? I wasn't in on the deal. Right. right. We but had to patiently wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> we were the, <laughs> had to get yeah, yeah, Auntie TJ, 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 Big event today, 5,000 Nolan and Hold'em. Bring home some hardware. Also, thanks, of course, to Parig and Jackie. It's been a great show. Next time, of course, the immortal Mike Sexton. Send in some emails. We'll see you then. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint.